Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B, and we reflect upon the Gospel passage from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. Being a winner, being on top, and being in control are deeply embedded in our human nature. And ambition and success have been the dominant traits of humanity from time immemorial. And this is what we are instructed from childhood onwards. If we are not on top, not the first in everything, if we are behind others, the parents admonish and question us. So we grow up thinking that being number one is the most important thing in life. For we are taught and trained to win at all costs. Individuals, groups, associations, clubs and countries are all same in this respect. The evolutionary concept of the survival of the fittest seems to be deep-rooted in our personal lives as well. But of course, there is nothing wrong in winning, in being number one. We are meant to excel and develop our talents to the maximum. However, the problem is how we reach there, how we achieve that end. The world says we should be the best, the strongest, the fittest to be on top. And this is where the ways of Jesus contradict the teaching of the world and where we fail to understand the logic of God. The logic of the world speaks of domination and control, employing techniques of coercion, and even demeaning and degrading others to be on top, to be number one. Because it is easier to ascend the ladder by pushing others down to the lower ranks. But Jesus says, there is a better and more lasting way. Become the first by becoming the last. To be the master by being a servant. You gain life by dying. You produce abundant fruits by falling to ground and decaying. There is a better way to destroy your enemy by loving them, not by annihilating them. This is the logic of God, and it contradicts the logic of the world. Hence, though three times Jesus tried to teach the disciples this truth on the way to Jerusalem, they failed to understand it. They were indeed as human as we are in today's world. Today, the liturgy wants us to focus on this very logic of God, where God teaches us how to become great without being dominating. We are continuing our journey with Jesus to Jerusalem. Coming down from Mount Tabor, Jesus and the disciples are on the way to Jerusalem. And they come to Capernaum via Galilee. But Jesus wanted to keep his arrival and journey a secret that common people should not know about this, his presence there. The reason he was teaching his apostles, says the Gospel. Jesus is in a serious mood and hence no distractions from the crowd. Last Sunday, yes, we heard again the same thing. Jesus was teaching a didaskin, the apostles. But it is the same theme and the same purpose. He wanted to make sure that they, the disciples, have grasped the true identity of his being, the true identity of the true Messiah who would liberate the world, but not through power, but by dying. He wanted the disciples indeed to grasp this nature of his kingdom before they can be sent to preach it. As we read through the gospel, we see St. Mark says three things happened on that way in today's section as Jesus was desperately trying to teach them. One, they did not understand. Two, they were afraid to ask. And three, they were having some serious discussions. This was the second time Jesus repeating the same thing about his impending suffering and death at the hands of his enemies. But the disciples failed to understand. First time it was the same. And we listened to that last Sunday. And it will be the same third time also, which we read in chapter 9, verse 32 onwards. The question is, 
Was it so difficult to understand what Jesus was trying to teach them? They themselves must have grasped the mounting opposition from the part of the authorities. That's why in St. John's Gospel chapter 11, when Jesus wanted to go to Lazarus, the disciples objected, saying, Rabbi, are you going there? The Jews are already trying to stone you. Verse 8. What they did not understand was the idea of a suffering Messiah. Because as we discussed last Sunday, it was hard for a Jew of Jesus' time to imagine the Messiah to be powerless, as they thought of him as a mighty warrior. In fact, the disciples never understood this. Even after the dis resurrection, as on the way to Emmaus, they told Jesus, Oh, we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. But at the scene of ascension in Acts, they asked him, Lord, are you going to establish the kingdom of Israel now? Acts 6.1 If you were a teacher, what would you be feeling? After trying so many times, still the apostles are dumb. But I think this is not just being dumb, not understanding, but worse. In fact, they did not try to understand, for they did not want to change their idea of the Messiah. They were almost sure that he was, Jesus was the coming Messiah. But they wanted him to be a Messiah of their understanding. They were not willing to understand and accept God's plans. And they would have never understood what Jesus told Paul, my power is revealed in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. The disciples were not just interested in what Jesus was teaching them. Because for them to be on top, meant to be powerful. Had only they understood what St. Augustine wrote, God had one son on earth without sin, but never one without suffering. Secondly, though they did not understand, they were afraid to ask. Were they afraid of Jesus? Was he so strict and insensitive? I think they were afraid not of Jesus, but of his teaching. Their fear was that they have to hear the bad news again, teaching about death and suffering. They did not want to spoil their expectations of a savior coming with power and might, not a failed one in human terms. Is it not true that many remain ignorant because they choose to be ignorant as they are afraid of truth which Jesus teaches? which the church teaches, which the Bible tells. They only want the truth that is sweet, that pleases them. As St. Paul says, the time will come when many will not accept sound doctrine, but with itching ears, they will gather around themselves teachers to suit their own desires. 2 Timothy 4.3 Yes, many, including many of us, seem to be happy and comfortable in the blissful, deliberate ignorance, because truth hurts, as it invites us to accept it, even when it is not sweet, and demands a change of our lives. If we really want to know the truth, the plan and will of God for you and for the world, listen to Him. Read the Bible every day. Spend daily some time with Him, but be ready to be challenged and be ready to change your lives. And thirdly, they were discussing something. Though Jesus was desperately trying to teach them about his impending suffering and death, they were so insensitive to it and were busy discussing their own ambitions and positions. Jesus knew very well what was going on, but still asked them, what were you discussing? But they were silent. Or as some translations put it, they said nothing. When the mother asks, Johnny, what are you doing? And if little Johnny replies, nothing, mom. Or if he is silent, he knows, and the mother also knows that what he was doing would not make mom happy. 
the silence of the disciples meant the same they did not want to tell jesus that means they knew that what they were discussing was at least inappropriate to tell jesus though the topic was important interesting in their circle hence they wanted to hide from jesus forgetting that nothing is hidden from his eyes remember the beautiful psalm 139 o lord you have searched me and you know me you know when i sit and when i rise you perceive my thoughts from afar even before a word is on my tongue you know it through and through psalm 139 verses 1 and 2 however although they did not agree with their ambitions their human tendency to be number one and even about their insensitivity to what he had just said about his crucifixion and death jesus does not rebuke them but he tells them how to be the number one he told them if anyone would be the first he must be the servant of all you are discussing who is the greatest the number one among you i shall tell you the one who is willing to be the servant of all one who is willing to be a slave of all this is the way for that not what you think of jesus was proposing a new paradigm of success and glory glory obtained through humility suffering and death a death which would put death itself to death as saint paul would say later on this is this and brothers saint peter says clothe yourselves with humility towards one another for god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble humble yourself therefore under that mighty hand of god that in due time he may exalt you first peter 5 verses 5 and 6 Remember greatness is not a quantitative achievement that can be tracked on a spreadsheet or posted on a scoreboard but rather what is reflected in how we elevate others in society by serving them be on top be number 1 by bringing them as well on to the top by being a servant to them all Martin Luther King said not everybody can be famous but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service the kingdom that Jesus established in this way through humility through sacrifice through his own death still survives even after 2000 years and will survive till the end though kingdoms empires and powers established through authority and domination hardly survived a few decades or centuries do you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven learn to be the least the servant of all though jesus was in the form of god he did not consider equality with god a thing to be grasped but emptied himself taking the form of a servant he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross philippians 2 verses 6 onwards may the lord bless all of us to embrace the cross of service and humility wholeheartedly amen